G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Here's a curious high school problem which goes as follows. Suppose A and B are single digit positive integers chosen independently and at random. All right, so two numbers A and B, they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, single digits, positive, positive, not zero. All right, what is the probability that the point A comma B lies above the parabola y equals ax squared minus bx? All right, okay, I'm lost right now. Um, what was that? So I, I choose two numbers, A and B, like two and five. In fact, I'll even just do this to get a feel for it. Suppose A is two and B is five, chosen at random. What is the probability that the point AB, two, five, lies above the parabola, y equals a, two x squared minus five x. All right, all right, so I get that. So that definitely is a parabola. If I graph it, I guess it's what upward facing, uh, who knows what it does, something like this. And here's the point two, five. I'm sure my numbers are totally off. Uh, if the point lands up here, I guess in the sort of U-shaped part, it's definitely above the parabola. If the point, say, land there, I guess it'd be below the parabola, that'd be bad. I want the probability that when I just choose numbers like this at random, boom, that point loves, lies above the parabola. Ooh, okay, all right, well I kind of get the question now, but it seems kind of scary. Um, what I could do, there are only nine choices for A, one, two, three, up to nine, and there's only nine choices for B, up to nine, so there are only 81 possibilities to consider. I could go through all 81 combinations, actually graph the parabolas for all 81 of those, and check the point A, B, with above or below, and just count. No way is that fun. I'm not going to do this work for 81 times in a row. That's horrible. Um, so what can I do here? Well, let me just push on with this one. Let's just persevere with it and try to do it maybe abstractly. Um, there's no way I want to do this individually. So strategy number seven, perseverance is key. Let's just persevere with this. So Abstractly, I've got a point A and I've got a point B, uh, sorry, number A and number B to give a point A, B, and I've got some parabola, I want this point to be above the parabola. That is, I want, well, how would that be? Uh, that, that, okay, that, okay, got it. This has height B and X coordinate A. So I guess I want the height B to be higher than the matching height of the parabola at the point x equals a. All right, so far so good. So I want b bigger than the matching point at x equals a. I'm gonna say it very slowly. I know it's probably bad math written or something like that. This is my scratch work, no one's watching, so this is good. B has to be bigger than the matching point at a. What's the curve? Uh, what's the question? y equals a x squared minus bx. y equals a x squared minus bx. So that's the curve, but I want b to be bigger than the matching point at x equals a. So I want b to be bigger than this formula at x equals a. All right, so put in x equals a, I want b to be bigger than a times a squared minus b times a. Ooh, does I want b to be bigger than a cubed minus b a. I'm not sure where this is going. Um, well, I don't know if it's helpful or not, but let me just put the b stuff together. b plus b a has to be bigger than a cubed. Um, in fact, I'm going to make b all by itself as a cubed over one plus a. I just did two little bits of work there, factored out a b and then divided by one plus a. All right, so that's it, that's the condition. Well, yeah, it is, but still never feel for it. So I guess the question is, choose two numbers at random, what's the chance that this works out, that b is bigger than a cubed over one plus a? Hmm. Well, let me just try it, let me just try stuff. If a equals one, I'm just trying it. This is saying I want b to be bigger than one cubed over one plus one. I want b to be bigger than a half. They'll always be the case. b could be one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. They'll always work. So there are nine values of b that work. Nine b's work. All right, for the case a equals one, nine b's work. All right, case a equals two. Let's just push our way through it. b has to be bigger than two cubed, eight over one plus two, that's three. Eight thirds, that's two and two thirds. Ooh, not all b's work. B equals one doesn't work, B equals two doesn't work, but B could be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. That's one, two, three, four, seven values. Seven values work. All right, all right. I guess I can keep going. Let's do A equals three, A equals four, and just count up how many work. Right now we've got 16 out of the 81 work, maybe some more work. I feel like I can do this. A little bit tedious, so just push on and I'm sure get the answer. So try it out. 
see what happens. Maybe, maybe things get tighter, that maybe the answers get a bit easier to see what's going on from A equals 3, A equals 4 onwards or something. Who knows? Try it out. So when you're ready, get an answer, and then check your answer with my answer that goes with the essay for this video. There's actually cool stuff going on here. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more Curriculum Inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.